All right, moving on with AMP's law, this is just a more complicated example, and it's similar. Oops, and it's similar to what we've done in the past with AMP's law. We're just adding again another layer of complication. So we have a wire on the inside where the current comes out. It's run by a sheath on the outside where the current goes in. This is a coaxial cable. This is how you get cable in your house, either from satellite or from the cable company. Um, they actually make these things. So what we're going to do is start at the outside and move in. So in red, we're going to put an Amperian loop around the outside of the entire thing. In blue, we're going to just look at the center. And this lovely magenta color, we're going to look inside of wire A. So outside of the entire thing, we're going to look at what the magnetic field is. So b dot dl is equal to mu zero times i enclosed. Since we're talking about an Empyrean loop, a round circle, that's this side's just going to reduce to b times two pi r, and that's going to be equal to mu zero times i enclosed. Now I'm incurring this, I'm enclosing this current from wire a that's coming out at us, and this current from the outer sheath that's going inside. So that's a positive current minus the um, outer current. Well, that tells me that the magnetic field outside is equal to zero. There's no crossover there. In the middle between these two things, I'm going to do the same thing. B dot DL is equal to mu zero times the enclosed current. Well, again, that's b times 2 pi r, and that's equal to mu zero. And in this case, I'm just enclosing that inner current i. So that magnetic field is going to be mu zero i over 2 pi r. Very straightforward, just the magnetic field from a single wire. And then on the very inside of this thing, inside of A, things are a little trickier. It's B dot DL is equal to mu zero I enclosed. And I enclosed is what's a little bit weird. So this again is B times two pi R. Notice that that part of it's not changing at all. And that's equal to mu zero I enclosed this time is going to be my current density J, which is my total current I over that cross-sectional area, pi A squared. So I over pi A squared, to squared, times pi R squared, the area, <clears throat> the area that my loop is enclosing, pi R squared. So the R's, one R, and another R goes away. Um, these pi's go away. And the magnetic field is equal to mu zero I times R over two pi A squared as a function of R. Um, it may come up and we'll deal with it when it does that we have to talk about the magnetic field inside of that area, but we're not doing that today. Okay, so um, we've talked about wires and, and they do more complicated things or different things with the magnetic field from wires than just looking at the magnetic field from one wire. Sometimes we look at a combination of wires. So, we have two poorly drawn wires here. Let's pretend the current of this wire is going this way, I, and the current in this wire is going in the opposite direction, um, up into the page. Let's say the wires are a distance of 2R, let's say big R, apart. And then we have a point over here, a distance of 2R away. We have a point right in the middle. And then if we do a top view with this wire going into the page and this wire having a current coming out of the page, um, we're not going to find the magnitude, but let's look at 
the direction of the magnetic field right there. What the magnetic field does because of those two things. So we'll say this is point A, we'll find the magnitude. This is point B, we'll find the magnitude. And then we'll find the direction and I'll let you uh, pick out the whole magnitude thing later. So looking at this point A, it has two magnetic fields, one from wire one, one from wire two. So the magnetic field from wire one, if we do our right hand rule at this position, B1 is into the page. And from wire two, let's go ahead and do that guy in red. From wire two, if we look at the magnetic field B2 is coming up out of the page. So if I want the total magnetic field there, it's going to be the magnetic field one going into the page minus magnetic field two coming out of the page. Just so long as we know that one is into the page, it's fine. So our total magnetic field here is going to be, and this is the thing I told you to remember, mu zero i over two pi r. Now, over two pi times two r, that's how far away it is, minus mu zero i over two pi times, and for wire two, it's two r, four r away, times four r. So my total magnetic field is um, equal to mu zero i over four pi r minus mu zero i over eight pi r. And so that gives me positive mu zero i over eight pi r. And that's gonna be into the page with, with B1, into the page. And we add them together just like we would, oh, I did, these are all capital R's. I add them together just like I would um, electric fields. So that's the total magnetic field over there. Um, point B in the middle, so this is for A, point B, we're dead in the middle of these two. So we have magnetic field from I1, blue before, so B1 at this point is out of the page. And then looking at the magnetic field from, from two, B2 is also out of the page. So my total magnetic field at A is B1 plus B2. Each one of those is a distance of R away. So it's mu zero I over two pi R plus mu zero I over two pi R, capital R, capital R. And the total magnetic field at B comes out to be mu zero I over pi R, and that's out of the page. That's fairly straightforward. Now, here's a little trickier. We'll draw a dotted line that just kind of continues on straight from here. That is not very straight. And these you might have to do with a ruler. I know I usually do. So looking at this wire and this point, um, if we do our right hand rule, point our fingers out of the page, our middle finger towards the point, we'll see that for this, if this is my radius, the distance to it, the magnetic field here points out at 90 degrees to this. Okay, so that's magnetic field one. And then if we look at the second one, same idea, that line, the magnetic field from the second one that goes into the page, the radius is this way. Um, the magnetic field from that second one is going to point at 90 degrees to the blue line. That's B2. Now, here, here's the deal. Um, identifying those angles is going to be tricky. And that's something you're going to have to work on in class. But the total magnetic field from this thing will point straight up in between those two wires. Um, 
just like this point here. It's just going to be a little bit less in magnitude because of that. So, magnetic field from wire. They add just like the electric field. Forces between wires. This is just a quick look at that. Um, so, let's say we've got wire one. We'll just look at two cases really quick here. We got wire one and the current's going this way. We have wire two, which should be a little straighter, and the current is going in this direction. Now, wire two, because of, well, okay, we'll say I1 and we'll say I2. Now, because of wire one, I have a magnetic field at the location of wire two. Doing a right hand rule, we see that that magnetic field is directed out of the page. So we'll say magnetic field one is out of the page. And again, if these things are a distance of r apart, magnetic field one is mu zero i over two pi r. That's magnetic field one. Because this current is in this magnetic field, it experiences a force. Doing our right hand rule, the magnetic the current's up, magnetic field is out of the page, and so our force on this thing, and we'll do our forces in blue, our force would be to the right, or, or pulling them apart. So for, for force one here, the force one is um, I times L times B times sine of theta, it's 90, so we'll leave it at that. So it's going to be I2 times the length of the wire, um, times the magnetic field, mu zero I one over R. That's my force on wire one and it's pointing to the right. Now, let's look at what's going on with wire two. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that's a force from magnetic field one on that wire. Um, wire two is also putting a magnetic field on wire one and if we look at that, um, that magnetic field also happens to be out of the page. This is magnetic field from wire two. And that's going to be mu zero I two over two pi R. And again, because this current is in a magnetic field, our finger with a current, our finger with a current, um, our middle finger with the magnetic field, we see that the force on this thing, the force from wire two, points to the left. So it's an opposite force, so far so good for Mr. Newton. Uh, so force two would be I1 times L times B2, and we'd get I1 times L times mu zero I2 over two pi R. Well, looking at these two, they're the exact same thing. Um, so they're equal forces pointing in opposite directions. That's what we'd expect. Um, now, we're not going to calculate it out this time, but let's say we have two more wires, but this time, here's a current. Here's a current. This time, their currents are in the same direction. So from this wire, I see that the magnetic field is again out of the page and because of that point your finger with the current middle finger with the magnetic field we'll see that the force is going to pull these two wires together and we calculate the magnitude in the same way so current goes in opposite direction the wires are pushed apart current goes in the same direction the wires are drawn together